Last year, we were on 1,000 subscribers. And now, sticks have over 800,000 subscribers and are crushing the algorithm. Roll it! We're making trailers for YouTubers until we make an actual freaking movie for Mr. Beast. With their last 10 videos doing well over 15 million views. I'm so excited. What? Also nervous. Today, we'll uncover how to go from zero to mega viral. I think I would still do some. It's a shorter path to success. What sticks learn from working with some of the biggest creators on the platform. We spend the most time with Mark Rober. He knows and he'll spend most of his time doing that. How to tell stories that keep your audience glued to the screen. It's like emotional. Wow. And a hot take you might not be expecting. We had all like the storytelling, editing skills for a long time, but that didn't help us build an audience or start to create great content. When we hit a that's when things like took off. You guys are crazy. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh my gosh, guys, that's unreal. So how did they do it? This video was sponsored by Dot Store Domains, a tool Sticks and I use to grow strong brands. More on this later. You guys have grown incredibly fast, one of the fastest growing channels on YouTube, especially considering the volume of videos that you guys post. So I'd love to pose a question to you. Let's imagine everything Sticks related is wiped from the face of the earth. All of a sudden your channel's gone, reputation's gone, the memory of you is gone, everything has disappeared. And now you have to start from scratch to make your way back to the top, to back to where you guys are now. What's the step-by-step -step process you guys would take to go from nothing to back on top? Great question. Yeah. Yeah, first of all, so good to be here and yeah. to chat with you. You seem like you could be our third brother. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got majestic beards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do. If we were starting from scratch, the first thing I would say is like, what is a real goal? Why are we doing this channel? Why is this channel even existing? For us, it's like we're making trailers for YouTubers until we make a movie for Mr. Beast. It's really connected to our actual goal and our actual dream for our lives and our careers. It's something that we genuinely want to achieve. That's our dream goal, making our first feature film. Having that goal, then finding a way to make your audience help you with that goal. Like for us, have a subscriber goal. It's like a tangible way to say like, once we hit this, we achieve our real life goal. So it's not just like subscribers for subscribers say, I think people want to help us do those things, get those metrics because we have a real goal linked to it. That's what we think. Plus obviously like the necessity of just having really, really good content. Like that's the basis of what all this is like built on. When you say good content, what makes up good content for you guys? For me, good content is like something that when you see the packaging, the title and thumbnail, it doesn't feel like it should exist. It's just so exciting to think about that as a video idea that it feels I shouldn't be able to watch this. It's just so exciting. That's the videos that I like to watch. How did someone think of that? and pull that off. Yeah. I have to watch this video. That's really interesting because I think a lot of people, maybe when they hear good content, they immediately just assume we're talking about like high quality visuals, nice editing, etc., etc. It sounds like from what you guys are saying, the first thing you guys think of when you say good content is like, is the idea engaging? Is the packaging engaging? Is that right? Yeah, for sure. 100%. I think we're good at making videos, making films for a long time, but that didn't help us build an audience or start to create great content. So we had all like the storytelling, editing skills, skills for a long time. That definitely comes into play big time, but when we hit a good idea, that's when things like took off. Okay, so you'd pick a goal, you'd start focusing on good content. Are there any next steps after that? I think I would still maybe try and do some sort of social hacking again. Like yeah. it's a shorter path to like success. If you can talk about something that people already love, it's obviously gonna take a lot longer if you are testing out brand new ideas that you're not sure if are good yet. But I think what we found is like, now that we've attached ourselves to these other creators that we create these trailers for, we now have an audience that we we can have a bit more freedom in the future to create content for that can be just like whatever we on the inside. It's like doing the thing you love, but finding a real audience for that and like marrying those two. So like for us, it's like we're making trailers for YouTubers until we make a movie for Mr. Beast. So if we turn someone's life into a movie and show it to them, that's taking an audience we know already exists and creating something for them where we had nothing to start with. That would be how we'd start is like finding a way to social hack that isn't the annoying version of like trying to ask people to collaborate or like try and bring to a really low effort idea to the table that doesn't give them much value. When you hatch this plan, how confident, like if we had to pick a percentage, were you that it would actually work out? I'd say 99%. <laughs> 99% confident. It depends like in what- Depends when. Cause like when we did the Eric one, we had the idea to just like go all out and try and find him well, and show it. To that's him. the thing. We didn't have the full idea. It was just if Eric's life was a movie, watch the behind the scenes of how we make that little movie. But then we tracked down the person and showed them their own yeah. movie, surprised them with it. That's when we got really confident. And that's why we flew to Texas, put money into this first project. Yeah, we took a big bet on ourselves. Took a massive leap. And I think at that point we we're pretty confident that this would work. We were like, we we're confident in our storytelling skills 
but it was just finding that right idea that would make so much sense. And to us, that made so much sense. So we like, we backed ourselves on that idea. How does one know when is a good time to back themselves? Because some people watching this right now, they might not be at 99% confidence level. Even if they have a good idea, there's still that fear there, especially if they're maybe newer to the game. What's your advice to people on, on when to like jump in with both feet? 99% confidence level is true, but we were so scared even to buy the ticket and fly there as we were arriving. We were scared that we weren't going to find Ryan Trahan for the first one, that we were going to spend all this money to make a video and come home in debt, thousands and thousands of dollars. There's another aspect of you probably will be scared even if it's the best idea. But how do you know yeah, when it is know? the like, right sometimes idea? Sometimes you think you have a really good idea, but then well, if you backed yourself on an idea that no one actually would ever watch, it's just a waste of time. I think like a good way to tell is just by sharing it with your friends or with like a community that actually knows about what a good idea is or has seen success and just gauging how they respond to you telling them the idea. Like you have to be very real with yourself. Like if you're telling people and they're just like, oh, that's cool. But if you're telling people and they're like, you have to do that. Oh my gosh. Like with, that was a couple of responses we got from telling our friends and that helped us push us to fly. They're like, go the buy other a ticket right now. Like, like um, make it happen. Like even telling our family our stupid idea, but they're like, oh yeah, do that. That's genius. Yeah. Um, so I think if you get those kinds of responses, you can gauge like how good your idea is. You have to get that feedback. It has to be real feedback. You can't just be friends and family trying to like satisfy your need for your ego. You know who you should ask? Young people, ask them and they'll just say, nah, that's cringe. Or they'll say, oh, that's cool. You know, like ask the hardest audience level. Yeah. That's cool. I want to quickly touch on the confidence thing again, because I find that really interesting. And I think it's something that a lot of creators starting out sometimes struggle with. What was it that made you so confident? Was it like there were some specific things you were evaluating? Was it like a gut feel? How did you calculate that? I think we have to paint the picture of the time. Both Curtis and I had been wanting to get into YouTube and filmmaking for so long and doing other video production jobs. And probably two years leading up to that leap was like an itching feeling of just like, we need to do something. We're ready to do something crazy and we're just waiting for that idea. So we prepared a little bit of like savings to like go towards this. We had reasons to put towards a big jump, but then we were waiting for the idea. Because we've also like coupled this idea with Mr. Beast, it kind of like makes it more solidified in our brain that it's a good idea. Like hearing Mr. Beast with having his own movies, like, oh, that makes so much sense. No one else is even thinking about doing this. To say the phrase like, we're gonna make trailers for YouTubers until we make a movie for Mr. Beast. And it sounds really, really cool. But even before that, when we were doing the Air Act video and we failed with showing it to him and we went to the airport, we tried to buy a ticket and we actually couldn't get on the plane and we lost $3,000. We went home that day and we realized, so we actually believe in ourselves like $3,000 much mm. that we would be willing to just put that into the yeah. dream. And it, that even showed us like, oh, that little leap, we're ready to do a bigger leap. This idea really is good. So you have to be very excited about the idea. Other people have to be excited about it. Yeah. And then you just have to go for it. And so. I think like doing small tests, I guess, is the way you can like break out what we've learned into like an actual step, testing your idea in a small way and then in a bigger way. And then until you like, just go for it. That's sick. I mean, JV, are there any questions that you had, man? Oh yeah. So you guys are really consistent and determined throughout the years, but what did you do or change that made the difference between your first 12 years on YouTube and the last two? I think in general, you gotta have the work ethic ready to go and it primes the pump. It's like, it puts you in the right position to find the right idea. So like we were working on YouTube before we could afford it. We made a sacrifice to do less of our other work to try and pioneer something. And we were working all the time. Yeah, we were getting better and the hard work was helping us train. So that was all good. I can't understate working hard, it's important. But when we work smarter, not harder, that's when things blew up. Yeah, I think ideas work harder than you can yourself and they can like pull in way more growth than just putting in hours. That's the cool thing about ideas. You can have like one idea that's worth like 10 years of work <laughs> and just like kind of fly you into the stratosphere. Interesting. I want to kind of pivot a little bit now because I know you guys have worked and met a huge amount of like the world's top YouTubers now. So I'm curious from you guys having hung out with so many of these amazing YouTubers, what are the themes or commonalities you've noticed across all of them? Like what are the 20% of things that they all do that seem to result in 80% of their successes? We spend the most time with Mark Robo because you know, where his shorts produces. What we've learned from him is like, he knows where his genius is and he'll spend most of his time doing that and then delegating. He's really good at coming up with ideas, writing. Yeah, that's one thing, like how focused they are on what they bring and not spreading themselves too thin. But I also think like something I've noticed about every single one of them, like Ryan Trahan, Zach King, Matt Pat and Mark Rober, but they're all very good on the fly. And obviously that's something that must come with YouTube experience and like just being on camera, talking with people, but like they just are so themselves all the time and saying these like funny, 
lines that you think they spend ages thinking about and writing about but they're just like genuine like that in person and it's cool to see like how well they can improvise and make decisions on the fly I think that's really cool do you think that's like a skill that can be built or do you think that's innate to them I think a lot of people can have it earlier on mm. like because they're just naturally good at coming up with ideas improvising they, f- they might be funny straight away but I definitely think people grow in that like if you sit down and brainstorm ideas every single day then at the end of a year you're going to be really much better at coming up with ideas on the spot and like if you're always writing scripts for your videos or films and stuff like that you're just toning and toning your skills there so i think you can definitely grow your skills in those areas for sure i know you guys started youtube in like 2011 with the channel parable and <laughs> you guys had this huge video it's called paper boy i think what happened was i'm just assuming here like you try to replicate the success of paper boy throughout with paper boy 2 i was thinking a lot of small youtubers get that small spark of success with one video and they kind of fail to replicate it so what would your advice be to them our old channel was linked to our church so we were like creating content with our church team when we posted a short film that got like two million views first of all we didn't actually notice it was viral because we never checked that channel for a while because that then... popped off a while after we posted it so we kind of jumped on that a bit too late but also i think it helps that this channel now we've kind of created about who we are as people as the basis and i think that's what youtube's really good at it's connecting audience with an actual creator not just a film that's why we really like the fact that we've integrated our story into our channel really well so that people don't just like our work but they come back for who we are and our story in what we've experienced we've tried short films on sticks before this as well and there's just a different audience. It's hard to find people that want to watch something that they have no connection with for the first time every time. Some of these short films aren't like YouTube videos where the title and thumbnail is just fully clickable. But we also didn't give up. It was like a good taste test of like, wow, we can actually do something on YouTube that gets a lot of views and made us be excited to keep trying for years until we're able to do it again. Yeah, that's crazy, man. 2011 until like you posted the Iraq video. It's huge yeah. determination. <laughs> How much pre-planning actually goes into to those crazy on the fly videos you guys are making it's not crazy planned no the the youtube video like especially like trying to find a creator that we don't have any connection with there's no secret plan to that we try to show that exactly how it happens and there's even like a couple creators that we have either made a trailer for that we still haven't shown it to them or ones that we really want to that we don't know how we're ever going to like reach out to them because they're so big (laughs) so we let those like real struggles be the the moments in the video that we have to overcome so it's just filming them for real and then when we get into the edit like finding ways to tell that story with editing and filmmaking voiceovers and music it's all these editing decisions that really bring it together Mm -hmm. so really because we've set up the structure to be like it's a hard goal and we know there's going to be little obstacles along the way we're not writing out those obstacles we're just like living them whatever the hardest part of this this journey is we're going to show that how do you think about storytelling and how do you create stories out of just a volume of clips and interviews and Mm, everything good question yeah (laughs) yeah i think most of that side of things happens in the edit obviously it's a bit of like for thinking before we film but then in the edit that's when we kind of look at it as if we're writing a movie script like what's the first act what's the second act what's the third act and we know that every good story has a moment where like the character just he's got his back up against the wall and he just has to decide to move forward only and he can't go back anymore like he's committed to his goal and he's got no escape plan and then there's a moment where he's like kind of lost everything and and then he he it looks like everything is over for the main character but then there's a huge reversal and then he he gets the goal that he's he's been trying for so i think like that's the kind of lens we look through when we're editing Mm. and i think i think that really helps like us kind of structure out what's important in the edit and what we should get rid of and i think also just like keeping that really really focused goal throughout the whole video it's like Mm. there's not a million different goals there's one goal show x creator their movie beforehand we've given ourselves like the main character's goal in story terms like the main character's goal is very clear and it's what they call an external goal but there's also in storytelling in film there's like an internal goal or a philosophical goal which that part we don't know when we're Mm. shooting it we don't know how we as people are going to grow in the journey but we've given ourselves a super hard goal externally so if we do everything we can to get to that goal and we're filming everything then along the way, if we experience some sort of transformation, then we look back and say, what were all those moments where we actually learned that lesson? And then that really hits at the end. When you bring together the external goal, we achieved it. We showed them the movie. 
But the internal goal, we learned something new, we, we changed, we got better in some way. Then now instead of having this big mess of footage, you're going back with like laser focus, knowing, okay, these are the moments, key moments along the way that will tell that story. If we've carved out the right moments at the end, you'll know what we're trying to say with the story. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people aren't doing. They're not trying to say something specific. I think Ryan Trahan's really good at doing it. Like he yeah. really like the video asks the question and, and once you get to the end, you kind of feel that feeling. That's what makes it more epic than just the straight, you know, all the YouTube titles are just like, I did this, I did this. You get to the end and you're like, great, you did it. <laughs> but what we are trying to do is like, say something about the journey it took to get there. That's really, really good advice. So your videos have an insane level of production quality. You guys have always been working in film for a long time. For a beginner getting into YouTube, they might look at the kinds of videos you guys are creating and look up to you guys and feel a bit intimidated. So what would your advice be to that beginner? Our type of content is like interesting because we're saying we're making a movie, so we have to make it feel like a movie, make it look like a movie, at least like the trailers. And I think we try to make the longer videos, like the documentary videos, have the same sort of feeling. But I think if we had to and there was no other choice, we would just film on iPhones and it would still like be through the storytelling that we kind of yeah tell our story. Yeah, that, that you bring up a good point. To me, there's like two ways of looking at it. First of all, I would say like use whatever you have in your hands to make something great. Whatever you've got right now, you can still make something great because the most valuable part of your creation is your ideas. When you boil things down to like its core essence, like on YouTube, we're using images and sounds. Like what does a shot size say? What is like an edit? technique of how long you play out a clip what does that say how do you use music if you get these basics really right and you learn it like a musician would learn a piano then you can use these really scrappy tools to make amazing stories i don't think it's production quality that makes something great mm. it's more with your ideas and like how you use what you have in your hand yeah that's like with Ryan Trahan, for example, his camera quality and sound stuff is good. But then his editing and his storytelling is so well crafted. It feels like if he were to add on like a $40,000 camera, it would just make it so much more epic. But like it wouldn't really take away from the craft he's already built with, with not having much to use. Does that make sense? Yeah, like his timing, his comedy, his like the feeling he gives you of like that wholesome feeling. These are all things that just anyone can do if you're just training yourself in these things. It's not necessarily production quality, but it adds so much quality to the video. Mm. So like you talk about when you boil it down to its core essence, there seem to be like there's certain things that can be applicable whether you're filming on an iPhone or a $40,000 camera. In your guys' opinions, like off the top of your head, if you're speaking to a beginner, like what are some of the most important core skills or principles that a beginner should learn about that would enable them to create great content? I would say like cause and effect. So cause and effect is like a storytelling principle, which is the next scene shouldn't start unless the previous scene forces it to start. In films, if there's a scene that doesn't move the story forward, usually you take that out because there's no cause and effect. But when you have like a goal and an obstacle and the scene is about overcoming a small obstacle and then forces you with a new question to start the next scene, that keeps you engaged like nothing else. That's what people mean when they say telling a story. It's like, it's not just a list of things that are done that could be rearranged in any order. It's a clear cause and effect that you have to watch this scene and then it's going to make you want to watch this scene and then it's going to make you want to watch this scene until you get to the end. And that's like a, a type of retention that people don't usually talk about. If you're hooked from the beginning, then you're hooked till the end yeah. if you implement that. And that can be from like a really macro sense of like the overall beats of your story, but also like in the writing and the and the the words you choose to say that lead you into the next sentence like mark rober is really good at this like mm. his writing is just insane because you don't even realize that it's gone to the next section because it's so good at like segueing it in not just in a way that's like fancy but it actually like it's, it is cause and effect like the next line could only have been said after the line before it set up and payoff people have expectations as they're watching anything and if you can subvert the expectations, you're telling a story where people don't know what's going to happen next. And that's what keeps them engaged as well. So like notice the kind of cliches or the regular things that people expect to happen next. Find a good way to subvert those expectations because if you just do it really cheaply and like everyone's expecting this person to walk through the door, but then a cow falls on them in the car. That's not good subversion of expectations. But when you drip feeding like other reasons to subvert the expectation, like if throughout the story, you've been alluding to something sneakily and everyone's expecting this person to go through a door, 
but then that thing that you were alluding to happens, it's like a really good payoff. So like thinking about setting things up early and then paying them off in an interesting way. It's tricky because there's so many different types of YouTube videos and different categories on YouTube. But I do think there are ways to implement like basic storytelling things yeah. in any kind of video. Yeah. And I think also like another thing, and this kind of links in with cause and effect, but making sure that every shot is in there for a reason and every shot is really clear. Like I think especially with YouTube videos, it makes it so much easier to watch when every shot is very clear what, what it's showing you. And I think, again, Ryan Trahan's just really good at this. Like he'll, Do you like Ryan Trahan? I think a little bit. <laughs> like even just like how he just spotlight on a image to highlight a like specific Like a really shot. obvious. Drawing your eyes to the right point of each shot, just so it's really simple why he's showing you that shot. And a lot of like YouTubers are really good at doing that um, already. But I think that'll help knowing if your footage that you're using is even good. It's just like it needs to really like be clear what it's showing you in each mm. shot. It's interesting. I like how you guys clearly are thinking more about like directing your viewers eyes, like leading them through the story, like creating a story. I think a lot of people might have expected you to be like, oh, like learn three point lighting or like do stuff like that. So it's really interesting to get a window into what you guys think is actually important. The last thing, because I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time. So obviously we got connected through dot store a brand that we're, we're both working with and you guys are working with them in a capacity of basically created a merch store like what's that journey been like yeah i mean we have our sticks dot store which is the coolest um, domain name because <laughs> you're just pretty much saying what it is but what we are doing with our store is like every creator that we make something for we want to create something like tangible for people to remember that movie and the age old way to do that is a movie poster so at the moment we're making fun movie posters for people to buy that help them remember their favorite YouTubers movie yeah and speaking of merch I want to quickly thank today's sponsor dot store domains whether it's Mr. Beast, Dude Perfect, Zach King, Colin Samir, Sticks, or even me, we all use dot store domains. And aside from being clear and looking cool, websites with a dot store domain see up to 2x more organic visibility and up to 87% more clicks. So stop settling for URLs that are longer than War and Peace. They're confusing, they hurt your brand, and you can pick up one today for just 99 cents for your first year. Use the link below and code on screen to build a better brand, sell more, and join some awesome cool creators with a dot store domain. Now back to sticks. I mean, before we wrap up, is there anything that you want to leave? Again, this, this video is going to be watched primarily probably by small creators. What is your advice to them or like last thing you want to leave them with? I would say like you're in the right place. If you're like that into the analytics, trying to crack the code and work out why you're not growing, that you're going to find it very soon. Keep studying and keep learning because there'll always be something new you learn that could unlock the viral video you're trying to achieve. To add to that, I would just say last year we were on less than a thousand subscribers yeah and for years we were just trying to get a few subscribers as much as we could and we were just happy to get to a thousand but the growth that's happened since being over eight hundred thousand in a year is crazy so if you see yourself on that journey you don't know when it could pop off you don't know when time will come for you so you got to just keep going you got to also just be okay with like the small growth you should spend most of your time getting good at coming up with ideas if something is working then implement it again if something's not working get rid of it just think i can come up with a better idea than this to make it work and it's just taking the responsibility on yourself is the most important thing like don't blame the algorithm don't blame other people you have to get better but once you do you'll be so excited once it actually blows up so thank you sticks for coming on if you're amped up about everything you've just learned you want to start taking action check out the video on screen it'll walk you through a step-by-step -step action plan that will give you the best possible chance in my humble opinion of getting more views and subscribers on your channel thanks again sticks and i'll see you there